Hi guys, I'm on my way to many. I am mom to 14 children. 12 of my children are still here at home with us. So we are feeding 14 people and little baby um, daily. And so we are going to make some freezer meals. Um, I really want to get my freezer stacked to the max full. Um, not quite sure about what's going to go on with the baby, how long I'll be in the hospital when I am. I have a while to go. Yet, um, there are some conditions with the baby that I could be going early or just so many variables, guys. So, want to get some things in the freezer so that there will be those items available for whether I don't feel good or other people are cooking. So, what I am showing you is actually what I'm starting with tonight, which is kind of funny because I went to, um, I'm actually cooking myself something to eat. <laughs> um, I went to bring the kids to a battleship and it's a Navy ship and it was really um, fun. We got home and then somebody's like, hey, are you doing a cooking day tomorrow? There's like no propane and they are so awesome. Um, if you are local, we switched over to Tamaro a few years back and we are so happy. We live on a main road and they have just been such a blessing to us and to our family about getting propane if we're in a pickle. And I'm not saying that that can always work out or whatever. I'm just saying like they have really been great. So we are prepping some of our food tonight beforehand. I took out all my chicken. I mean, all my meats and I'm going to show you that. And I'm also going to show you what I'm making. I'm making a couple dishes that... I think most of these dishes you guys have not seen before. Um, so I need to make a chicken and broccoli soup and I'm gonna make that tonight. And then um, some of my children are gonna work on chopping up some vegetables. So we have like the food processor that's getting hooked up now to chop up some cheese and some vegetables into that. Okay, so right here I have all the meat that I bought the other day and then two sheet meat which is going to be 47 pounds of burger and or sheep. And then I have all 16 packages of these chicken thighs in these two boxes. And we are going to make meals into all of that. So I am going to be doing freezer meals tomorrow, but tonight I'm gonna to do whatever prep work I feel like I can physically handle tonight. And I might end up like having some kids chop some things. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I just have, um, I'll probably do two onions and then broccoli. And I'm gonna make a cream of broccoli soup. And that is gonna be used um, over one of my chicken dishes, which you'll see later, but I'm gonna work on making that tonight. Alrighty, so here I am just turning on, it is the onions and the um, and the broccoli, and I am just going to cook this down until it's soft, and then I'll be back. Sorry guys, it's the evening, and my kitchen is dark. I added a quart of chicken broth, and then I'm going to add to that some arrowroot powder. You could use cornstarch, you could use flour, whatever you wanted to use, just to thicken it up. I'll use about that much. And then I'm just going to stir this in. Then I will add my milk. All right, so I'm just gonna add milk. There's cream on the top of this, just because I didn't feel like taking it off, to be honest with you. And that's a whole gallon I'm putting in there apparently my spoon so all I'm gonna do is stir this and let this thicken up a little bit and then this will be used tomorrow in the recipes so my son is just taking these cabbages all different types of cabbages um, from the garden and he is grating it into here we'll do quite a bit of cabbage actually because I have it as a main ingredient in quite a few of my recipes okay so I'm gonna take as much hamburger that will fit in my roaster and um, turn that on Okay guys, so this is how we are set up so far this morning. We took um, the two roasters that I have and I have those filled with 48 pounds of meat, I believe it is. Um, so two roasters, 48 pounds of meat, that's cooking down. And I'll show you what we prepped um, last night and then I will share what we're going to do in a minute. So we have a bunch of carrots and 
I cut up a bunch of cauliflower. This is all from the garden, so you probably didn't see it in a grocery haul because we got all that from the garden. Beautiful, beautiful. And then we have, this is all cheddar cheese. I do have more cheese, um, but I just did the cheddar cheese as of right now. This is what's gonna get us started. And then I have somebody who is um, chopping up some homemade mozzarella cheese and then also doing a bowl of cabbage. So what I'm gonna do right now is just take this stuff and shove it to one end. And we're gonna work on all these chicken thighs. We are going to de uh, like debone all the chicken thighs so that we can do that. So in total, I have 16 packages with roughly five pounds each in each package. So that's what we're working on now. I'm just gonna move some of this stuff over. Lots of pans. <coughs> actually need to go out and get my filet knife. So this is half of the meat in here with a little bit of water and then we're gonna cover this over and we will cook this until it is brown. Correct. Alrighty, so I am going to work on this. So one, there was no chicken breast at the store, but two, is that this chicken was is chicken thighs with the bone and skin so this right here was i think it was a dollar 69 a pound do you remember um where chicken breast was like 3.99 a pound so if you can do this and take the time and the effort to do this then you could save a lot of money just by switching your cuts of meat but it can be used the same so all i'm going to do is let me come a little closer i don't have perfect setups i'm just taking this bone right here out and then pulling this skin off and i'm going to save that into a little bowl that's next to me here into that bowl and that can be used we'll make some broth um but we're just taking the bone out and the skin off i have Filet knives here, it makes it a little bit easier, but you can use any like kitchen knife would be fine as well. You wanna put the sugar down or whatever? Yep. Um, there is no, there's no sauce like I think. Oh, okay, I just sent the creasing down there. Where do you want this? So here's the bone. Obviously, there's some meat on here. I'm gonna just chuck it in there because that's all gonna get boiled together for broth, but also we'll be able to potentially take some tidbits of chicken off there. And then I'm just taking the skin off as well. Bananas or mangoes. So then you have a piece of meat like this. Um, and I'm just putting, let me see. Uh, I suppose that's, whoa, sorry guys. Um, so a piece like this, and I'm just gonna put this in the bottom of this pan here. And I'm just gonna like keep filling these up. I'm doing right here, these four packages are gonna be for these four pans. I'm putting roughly five pounds per package in each one. And yeah, wrong knife, where did I put my knife? Oh, in front of me. Lots of happenings going on this morning. You can hear it all, go hear it all going down. Um, we are canning some things this morning prepping a bunch of these meats. Some people are sharpening some knives. Just doing all this stuff. The good thing is, is somebody said something about work. Yeah, Josh said there wasn't one. Can you get the powdered tomato? No. There's powder in the... Um, living room and I think a gall gallon jug maybe I can't remember
So somebody said something about like the kids working all the time because we show you like work days, but the whole thing is, is when we're doing days like this, nobody is actually doing like a huge amount of work on their own. Yes, it's a long day, but everyone's splitting things up. So like right now, most of my younger kids are in with one of my older kids and they are um, playing a game in the living room. And so it's just um, different. But also if we have all these meals prepped, like we don't have to prep these on a daily basis. So when dinner comes along and it's somebody's turn, a lot of times like they're just throwing something in the oven or in the Instapot or whatever it might be. So we're able to do fun stuff during that time. So I show work days like this um, because that's what makes the other days and the other times so special for us. Okay, so they have been working on this. I was for a couple minutes, and then honestly, my back was killing me, so I need to lay down for a minute. So we have four pans here, working on this. Is this the bone pan with the skin? Yeah. So this is actually, we've upgraded apparently to a big old pot um, that's going to get boiled down after. Um, and they are just working on all this chicken. Okay, so here we have roughly four to five pounds of chicken in each one of these. Here is my um, homemade cream of mushroom soup. Broccoli. And, yeah, cream of broccoli soup. I use broccoli, not mushrooms. And then here are two pounds of broccoli. So I am going to cover this with the frozen broccoli. So basically what I am making with this is kind of like you know, like stuffed chicken, you see it. I don't know, I think when I was younger, I used to buy like these stuffed chickens that were like wrapped up. So I'm just kind of like deconstructing that and making it into an actual meal here. And my belly's in the way to get all the way down. I'm gonna move over here a little bit. So because of the amount of chicken in here, each of these would be a meal for my family because it's four to five pounds. And now I'm gonna take some of the cream of broccoli soup and pour this over the top. Probably do about four cups per container. I love chicken and broccoli together. Am I the only one here? It smells so good. I hope there's a little bit. I might actually eat the cream and broccoli soup for lunch. The kids are eating everything else, but my throat's been sore. I might just have some of this. Yum. It saves so much make money, like making your own cream of broccoli, cream of mushroom, cream of celery, whatever your family likes soup because it's so inexpensive like to make it. I am going to top off. These ones seem like they didn't get quite enough there. I'm going to top a little bit up there. There we go. Okay. So we have that. And then what I have here is a whole bag of pork rinds crunched up. I'm probably not going to use the whole bag, um, but I am in another recipe. So I crunched that up and then I have, I'll actually move it over here. I have a bunch of cheese here. So what I'm going to do is just take, I don't know, what is that? Maybe a cup, a little over a cup. Sprinkle some of this on the top. Probably about maybe a cup and a half, I guess. And then this is completely um, gluten-free and it also would be a keto recipe as well. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle some of these right on top. I could have done these in the um, food processor. I was just being a bit lazy.
So there you have it. There are four meals down in the freezer. We are going to um, put some parchment and then aluminum foil over these and we'll have these four meals. Let's move on to the next ones. Okay guys, so here I have more sets of chicken. So each of these have four or five pounds of chicken in them. And what I'm making is like a pizza type casserole. Not really a pizza casserole. I don't know what I'm making. Basically, I'm taking this chicken and layering it. I'm gonna put some um, tomato sauce on top of that. Um, this we're actually gonna water down just a little bit more. Um, this was our tomato powder. I don't know if you can see it. It's our reconstituted tomato powder. And so I'm going to take that. Um, we dried it last year from our tomatoes. I totally ran out of tomato sauce or tomato puree or spaghetti sauce or anything type tomato-y. Um, so we're using tomato powder with water. Um, I put a little bit of sugar in there and a little bit of oregano. And so we're gonna put that on top and then um, we'll do two different types of cheese and what else? Pepperoni. Yes. You can probably put the whole thing in. Okay, so this here is mozzarella and this is cheddar. All right, that's good. Yep. So put half of that on there and then half of it on there and then we'll make more. Grab me another spoon, please. Took my apron off. You know I'm gonna spill something on my shirt now. I actually stopped and <laughs> I said whatever and I was gonna eat that cream broccoli soup, so I stopped and I ate cream broccoli soup. So we're gonna do this. I'll show you how I'm going to do this. I'm just gonna take some mozzarella. Throw a large layer of that on the top. Do you want to make some more of that? I say I don't know, probably. Oh, I should have used a spoon for it. I guess I'll. Once it cooks, it's always good. Let's see. There we go. And then I'm going to take, we have some um, pepperoni. I just cut it, the, or my daughter cut these in half. So we're just going to put a bunch of these on. So today I'm trying to make things that maybe like people would eat that would have carbs in it. Um, that's kind of more low carb keto type friendly. This would be kind of like a pizza casserole slash chicken parm. I don't know, but I guess apparently a mother to invention. Let's see. I'm sure it will come out great. I made similar to this before and it came out so yummy. All right, so now I'm gonna take some cheddar cheese and throw that over the top here, not as much as the mozzarella. And then that one's ready. I'm gonna go on the other side. It's kind of difficult, like bending. I've had, this pregnancy has been quite, I don't wanna say odd, but I will say odd, I guess. Um, different, maybe than other pregnancies I've had. So I'm out of breath a lot. There's a question of maybe like I have a lot more fluid and measuring a bit higher, um, that type of stuff. So I feel a lot more pregnant than I actually am. <laughs> so bending over for periods of time is a struggle for me. So we are gonna do, I think most of our meals today, we're gonna do four. So I'm trying to do all these chicken ones first. And then after that, our um, hamburger is cooking in our little slaves over there, which is the roasters. So I have all of that cooking down. That should be done pretty soon, actually. I can, we stirred it once, which I didn't share with you guys, but you know how to stir some meat. We just stirred it down once and yeah. There we go. And then I'm going to put some of this cheese on top and then she will do the other one and we will be back. Oh, the big pumpkin 
I am going to where you put the wrap away. Yes. Alright, I'm gonna go grab the wrap while she finishes up those two. cheese on top. I find if I put the parchment over the top first, it's less sticky to the aluminum if I need to cook it like that and plus in having that all stuck. wrapping these up and then I'm going to do some other chicken meals but they're not going to be in trays they're going to be in bags okay guys we are back put those in the freezer um I grabbed some iced coffee I needed something needed something okay so I have a daughter over there who is putting some bacon and cookie sheet and we will be cooking those you see here we'll be cooking those in the oven and then um I am going to take I have 12 pounds of chicken and I'm going to bring that over here and I'm going to show you how I'm going to mix that up. So I have my three bags that I already wrote out way down here. Oh. 12 pounds of chicken, my three bags. Coconut oil. Could you actually put these back for me, please? Please do. Thank you. And wrong one. Well, that would have been not good. That was chili, pe uh, chili powder, and I need Creole seasoning, not chili powder. Okay, so what I am going to do is grab a spoon. I start out the day a lot of times like being on top of things and whatever and then I get to part of the day and I'm like yeah I forgot this and that and this and that do you guys do that okay all I'm going to do here is we have 12 pounds of meat and I am going to take a bunch maybe about a cup and a half of coconut oil no I didn't touch the meat with this and I'm going to have my assistant, move that a little bit, mix all the oil in. So this is our pot here of all the tidbits of fat and um, bones and that type of stuff. Is that the last package of chicken? Yep. So we will put some water in this and let that boil down as well. What we do, I don't know if you guys do this or not, I like these containers, we can get them at Sam's Club, and then what we try to do is just make our own homemade and make our own homemade in here, and then just dump it like into the same containers, because these are really like convenient the way they fit, versus like a canning jar is rounder and would fit the same amount, and these like fit in my space really well. So she's going to mix all that up. Need a little bit more. Mm -hmm. 
this morning we were making that tomato sauce powder stuff. And, oh my goodness, there's so stuck in the bottom. It was absolutely ridiculous. So if you make tomato powder um, and you use canning jars to put it in, what do you use to try to get it so it's not unstuck? Or any tips and tricks on that would be lovely because apparently I did it completely wrong. Before last year, what I had done, I mean not last year, maybe two years ago, I had done tomato powder and I um, ended up taking and putting like just one quart of tomato powder like for the house and then I put the rest in my lar bags. I might end up doing that this year. I'm not quite sure, but yeah, it was stuck, like totally stuck. Good? All right, I'll hold it open and then you can... Let's start with eight and then we'll... So now we're going to use the same bowl because I don't care. I'll be honest. I'm not going to wash this bowl just to put another seasoning in. There's going to be very little seasoning left in the bowl. We're going to do the same type of style but with a different seasoning. And I'm going to do it right in the same bowl. So she is going to weigh out 12 pounds of chicken. Okay, so we're going to do this last one here. I'm going to clean up the table so we can get ready for the um, meat meal. You ready for nappy? So again, I'm gonna add a bunch of coconut oil. Alrighty. She's gonna mix that in. Then I'm going to add some lemon pepper seasoning. So these, when we're doing this, we could put them in Instapot, but most likely this is something actually that we would put like on the grill or like in the oven. Or maybe saute in a pan. Are you saying? Gonna grab three bags. Oh, I did two already. I gotta do one more. Was that all that was left? Was that there? Yeah. Just throw that in there then. I'm actually gonna do four bags on this one because I wasn't quite sure and there wasn't that much left in here. I was thinking on doing some like chicken nuggets, but we'll do that next time. We will do that next time. So she's going to mix all that up. All right, looking good, looking good. Yeah, we're cleaning up all this chicken stuff. Yeah. All right, those are done. So we are just going to seal these bags up and clean up the area. And then we can get on to our hamburger meal. Yeah. So we have lemon pepper chicken, Creole chicken. Um, then we have the like pizza casserole type chicken and then the chicken and broccoli. So yum, yum, yum. I think that would be 16 meals, no. 15 meals, so there's 15 meals. Okay guys, we are going to make cheeseburger casserole. Um, and I'm kind of like, it's a very forgiving recipe, so I'm gonna kind of just eyeball it a little bit. So what I'm going to be doing, I actually put like water in this to cook it so it wouldn't burn. So there is quite a bit of water in this um, and I'll just kind of strain it against the edge. I make it a slotted spoon. Not quite sure how I'm going to do that. I'll see how it works out. And then I'll add the ingredients. 
Okay, so we're just gonna do this hamburger. It would be 20 pounds of burger. I have about um, the whole, let me see, the whole amount of burger I had was 47 pounds um, of burger in both of the canners. So that means that most likely this is about 24 pounds <coughs> or so. Um, but I'm going to mix some in here and kind of just eyeball some things. I also need space in this. Um, I think I might do two batches because I need a little bit of space in here to be able to mix in these bowls. Do you want to grab some of that, um, cauliflower there? Here's some cauliflower that we have from um, the garden, and she is gonna take and should probably. Do you want to get like a small knife and maybe just chop it just a little bit smaller? She's gonna chop some of that a little bit smaller for me. I'm gonna fill the bowl about halfway with the meat and then go from there. Trying to figure out, I two of the recipes that I had for the hamburger actually required spaghetti sauce because I thought I still had some in the basement. Um, and I don't see that I even have tomato powder. So yeah, I'm trying to like rethink some recipes as I'm here to just trying to figure out what would be best for our scenario. So we have the bacon for this recipe in the oven right now. And also we have, I have a daughter who's making some homemade enchilada sauce. You could actually, no, enchilada, the bacon's for this recipe, the enchilada's for the next recipe. So always trying to think ahead, always trying to think ahead. Um, so she's making the enchilada sauce for the next recipe for me. which you could always buy at the store or you could do whatever or you can make your own yeah those are fine so whatever your hamburger is that you have um you'll do like one third of that in cauliflower as well and this will help stretch out some of your meat but also gives it like a big bulky like i don't want to say heavy type filling i guess is better filling dish meal whatever you might say you know, I want yeah probably like um, two more of what you just did i did before make this recipe with like cauliflower like what's it called rice cauliflower and i did not like it, it actually came out really um watery that way so i would not recommend doing that i'm going to do let's see i'm thinking this is probably about two-thirds of what i um want total so i'm going to put in three tablespoons of onion powder if you're doing the 20 pounds of hamburger in like one thing, then you would be doing four tablespoons of onion powder, but just the size of my bowl and stuff. I'm doing it this way. And then the same of onion powder. I'm gonna use some leek powder here because I have a bunch of it. Now this is just hamburger. I didn't put onions and peppers and that type of stuff in it either, so. Um, and then I'm going to add some, oh, I didn't get the mayonnaise yet. I'm going to, I'm going to go grab the mayonnaise and then be back. Okay. So I'm just going to scoop some more mayonnaise, probably about two cups of mayonnaise. Uh, I might not quite get two cups. Let's see. Alrighty. So over here. Jeez, let's see. I don't need egg 
eggs. Do you want to crack some eggs into a bowl? I'm thinking maybe like eight for this. Um, then I'm gonna take some cheese to mix in and then I'll do some cheese on the top as well. There's seven in here. That'll be fine. What are you doing working on? Uh, cucumbers. I wasn't sure. I used up the rest of the sugar by stunning a cup. Well, I wasn't sure if I should bring a bag back or if it's Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we have... So the full recipe I'll read to you guys, and then I'm just eyeballing what I'm doing for this portion here. So the whole recipe is 20 pounds of hamburger, 5 pounds of bacon, 10 eggs, four tablespoons of onion powder, four tablespoons of garlic powder, two cups of mayonnaise, two cups of heavy cream, um, eight cups of cheese and, cauli and cauliflower. So the cauliflower is more, <coughs> I usually eyeball it. It probably would be like a head and a half of cauliflower, depending on your head size. Do you want me to dump the eggs in there? Yes. Do you want to move the cheese over and then mix that? Mix that, yeah. With this spoon or my hands? Oh, with this spoon, it's really hot. Okay, so I'm going to get out. I just opened also a pint of homemade ketchup. And I am going to get out the pans. Let me move this out of the way. Let's see how hot that is. Oh, it's not too bad. And then I'm going to grab some of my pans here. This is like not too hot. <laughs> So she's going to do two cups of the milk there. It has cream on top, so a lot of it's going to be actual cream, but we're not going to be super... Do you have a cup in uh, I do not, sorry. I'm going to cut some more cauliflower because it's less than like a third of what's actually in there. So basically what this is, it actually is really yummy, um, is it's cheeseburger. It tastes like cheeseburger. So we are making a cheeseburger without the bun, without whatever. This can be eaten just plain. This could be eaten if you wanted to do like um, pork rinds or if you're keto or you could do chips or you could um, have it with biscuits if you weren't doing keto. Um, you could also do like lettuce and put it on top of some lettuce. However you want to do it as a family, you could put it like on a baked potato, on top of french fries. Yeah, however you want to do it. Just giving you some ideas. Not two. That's fine. Yeah. And then that can get mixed in and then do a little bit more cheese. You could leave these whole because they'll cook down, but with the little kids in our house, I'd rather have them in smaller pieces. It makes it easier in the long haul for us. I'm just gonna add a little bit more cheese to the. Okay, so she's going to mix that in and then we're going to plop that into these pans. I think the worst thing about filming is I can never figure out my equipment. And I'm just trying to do my stuff and it doesn't like me and doesn't want to work the way that it wants to work. So my little thing is hanging down over there 
because I didn't think you guys wanted a video of my wall. And I'm gonna hold the camera while my daughter fills up these containers. It's kind of funny. I know that I have um, a main accent now. I've been here like long enough that, yeah, I have a main accent. Uh, years ago, my um, one of my daughters was in speech therapy and I was questioning some of the things that um, she would say. And the speech therapist is like, uh, that's a down east, northern Maine type accent. There's nothing wrong with her speech. And I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm from Massachusetts, so, um, originally, so, like, we used to have a bit of, like, a Boston accent, so, like, when I first moved up here, people would, like, kind of make fun of my, I would say, ka instead of car, and, um, that type of stuff, but up here, things are a lot different, too. Um, they say, like, dooryard, so we... I was like, what the heck is a dooryard? And just learning different things. I th It's kind of funny though. I saw a comment the other day where somebody was having an issue apparently because I say idea instead of idea or I, whatever, whatever, however you, we all say it. I mean, it's just kind of like that whole tomato, tomato, potato, patata, um, or like pecan versus pecan or whatever. It's just like accent related. Not a big deal to me. I really don't care what people think about my accent. I think it's what makes us original people. Um, anyway, I thought it would be fun because of this. Um, I was actually, um, I watched this study, one of, uh, Sarah's husband from Hurting Little Cows, he sent over a little clip of, um, just different accents and like from around the United States. So I thought it would be funny if people like in the comments wrote things that are like specific to your area that people say that probably other people wouldn't say. <coughs> you don't have to. I just thought it'd be fun. I think it's actually interesting to be honest with you to hear different dialects from different places. Um, okay. So... Now we are going to add to the top some things. Okay, probably really a weird angle, but I didn't know how else to do it. In a couple minutes, I'll have somebody redo my camera setup. I tried to do it so I could have um, a little bit of a different angle, but yeah, then it didn't like me. So what I'm doing, this is a pint of homemade ketchup. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to put on a layer of pickles. It's kind of funny because my daughter is making pickles right now. She is making bread and butter pickles, which will be in another video. Um, I think probably a gardening video, but that is what she is doing right now. So pickles, and then I'm gonna cover it with cheese. I think I need one per thing actually. I thought it would be good, but I think it's, yeah, two more. Um, so I'm going to grab the cheddar cheese and just plop this on top here. And there we go. There's already like the cheese inside, but it's good to have cheese on top. Yeah, some people say that Maine is like a few different states because you have Southern Maine, which really isn't even, from the perspective of people up here, is not really even Maine because they hold such different views as um, from like Southern Maine. So Southern Maine hits the New Hampshire and Massachusetts border. So a lot of people that are in Southern Maine, like Portland area, um, those people, they tend to hold the same views of people that would be like in Massachusetts. Um, and up here where we're at, it's very, um, I don't know if I could actually like give a word to describe it, but it's more like 
when I first lived up here, I was thinking it was more like Alaska because people like to live off the land. And not a lot of people like have huge gardens, but lots of people like to, um, like fishing and hunting are huge up here. I think like our town is called Sportsman's Paradise or something like that. So yeah, that's really, that tells you how it is up here. Um, and they also are people that believe in like, I don't wanna say taking care of each other, maybe isn't the right word, but it's more that way. Like they're very leery of people who come from the outside, which um, because of where we live and because it's so beautiful and because it's sports and it's paradise, we get lots of people that come up here for the beauty and for like hunting, fishing, that type of stuff. Okay, so these are what they are. So we have the homemade ketchup and then we have a layer of pickles and then we have the cheese on top and then I'm gonna wrap these up and let's get these done. This next idea was born from the love of enchilada casserole. So if I made a low carb enchilada casserole with low carb tortillas, then they would have wheat in them. And if I made them without um, those tortillas and I made them with gluten-free tortillas, then they'd be too high carb. So here's my idea and I'll show it to you. So I am just gonna add some taco seasoning to this meat here and stir it up a little bit. If I need, I'll take some of the, well, that'll probably be all right. I was gonna say some of the juice from the pan that I cooked it in, but I think this should be okay. Yeah, just a little bit more. So what my plan is, is instead of using any bread at all, which I don't really like using anyway, is to have kind of a mixture with cabbage because we had lots of cabbage from the garden. So somebody had, um, somebody had one of the kids, somebody had picked the cabbage and then another child grated the cabbage up for me. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is do four pans of this. This is cabbage, but I need space. So I'm gonna lay out the four pans. And now I'm just going to take, I'm going to use cabbage in another dish, but I'm just going to take a layer of cabbage in each of these. And you could just layer this as far as um, if you wanted to do like a layer that was just long leaves. If you had bigger people that might work, my kids would probably pick around the cabbage if I did that. I tried to do lasagna like that before and they just kind of left the uh, the leaves of the cabbage in the tray. So I figured it'd be better if I ground it up. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I'm going to do a layer of this taco meat. Some of the pieces are kind of big. Just break them up with my fingers real quick. My goal is uh, maybe not. I'm going to try to get this meat here to be for these four casseroles. And then I'll have whatever for the next casserole. I didn't really weigh out the meat very well in these types of recipes. Let's throw that in there. Alrighty. So now I'm going to spread out each pan here and then I'm going to take some cheese and just sprinkle the cheese. Oops, I did it wrong. Sorry, I'll put that cheese in the corner for a minute. I'm gonna take salsa and throw some salsa down. About half a quart, maybe three quarters of a quart. I'm gonna do four quarts for these three jars, and then I'm putting the cheese on top of that. I'm so professional, I'm so professional. All right, so we're just doing the layer of the cabbage and then the layer of the meat. I normally would do this with a spoon, but I'm trying to break up some of the big hunks here. All right, 
So now I'm going to salsa. And I'll salsa some of this. Last one. All right, now I'm just gonna take the spoon, smooth that in. This one will look a lot more fancy than the other ones because I actually remembered what I was doing. Okay, so there we go there. Now I'm going to add the cheese. on top of there. This is gonna be like the first section of layer here. All right, so then I'm gonna make another layer on top. So with that, I'm gonna take the cabbage. Now, if I wasn't gonna be using all that cabbage today, what I would do is I would not be using my hands to go in there, but all of this is going into the meals that I'm making today. So I'm not too worried about that. Some cabbage. There we go. Last one. If my belly wasn't so big, then I'd like lean over in it, but it is, so I walk around the table. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna do another layer of the meat on top here. I might actually have enough to do five. I don't know, I'm gonna do these four and then I'll see. I might do a fifth one. Enchilada casserole was one of my kids' favorites and we haven't had it for really long. I'm hoping that this will just bless them with a new thought or fl flavor or whatever. Yeah, we probably have enough for one more. So I'll finish these four and then I'll do one more off camera. All right, there we go. So we have those and then what I'm going to do now is actually my daughter made some enchilada sauce. So I'm going to do the enchilada sauce over the top here. You could buy um, store-bought sauce, whatever you wanted to do, but I'm going to use our homemade enchilada sauce. because it will be so yummy. There we go. Leave the rest of that last one that I plan to make and grab my spoon. I'll just kind of spread it around. All right, and then I'm gonna to top these with cheese. Yummy. Might have to grate some more cheese. We'll have to see. We did, I told them to do like a bowl yesterday of the cheese, but then I wasn't quite sure. I said, well, we can always stop and do a little bit tomorrow. So that's what we'll do next. So that is it. So I'm going to make one more of these and then I will be back. Okay, so the idea for this meal is kind of like um, stuffed peppers, but stuffed peppers can be really difficult when you are, have a younger person, and then they don't want to eat the pepper, and they only want to eat the inside. So what we're going to do is kind of like construct that here in these four pans by having, I have some um, cauliflower, this is just raw cauliflower in the bottom, and then I have some frozen peppers and onions, and we're going to dump those on the top of these here. Do you want to dump or hold the camera? That's fine. I'm going to dump the other one. Okay. So 
So let me throw it on there. Oh. And then this is the last bit of meat that we have. Um, these are all going to be going in the oven. I noticed a little bit of pink here and there, um, but they're going to be going in the oven for like an hour, so they will be fine. They're cooked enough to be able to go in here. So now we're going to take, this is going to be for eight meals. So we're going to take about half of this container and put it in these four here. You could also, if you wanted to, you could um, add some taco seasoning to this and then put the taco seasoning meat on top of it. Um, we're just gonna leave it like this today. So we have the cauliflower and the peppers and onions and the um, hamburger on top. Do you want this one? Cause this one actually yeah. has like a slotted spoon. Um, and then we'll cover this with cheese in just a minute. All right, so I have my four pans here. I thought I would have more cabbage left, but I don't. Um, I am making like a big, a big Mac casserole. So I'm gonna start off by just putting a layer of um, cabbage on the bottom. Then she's gonna put some carrot in the bottom. You could do a lot more cabbage. Like I said, I used up all the cabbage. So yeah, that's how it is. We probably though, for us and our family, we will probably eat this with a salad or on top of a bed of lettuce. So it's not too much of a concern, and I'm glad that we could have used all that cabbage up. That is awesome. So super exciting. So a layer of cabbage, a layer of carrots, and then the last layer is going to be a layer of onions on the bottom. You can go ahead and grab the onions. So now on this side, we've actually used about half of that and she's done these. And then we're just gonna top these with some cheese. We might actually like, when we go to eat these, I'll probably take some salsa, some sour cream um, and those types of things out. And I might make some baked potatoes because some people might wanna like serve this over a baked potato, just depending on who they are and how much they need to fill up or whatever you might want to say. So it really just depends on how you want to eat this or serve this. So she is just gonna fill up each of these trays and then I'll be back with you. So she did all the hamburger here. She's just breaking up the hamburger before she puts the pickles on there. And then we're putting about one big dill pickle, maybe a little bit more on the top of each one of them. I almost forgot about supper. So um, my husband will be home tonight, most likely. I don't know. He has been working crazy hours, and right now he's like over two hours away. So I don't know. Supper's usually like he gets earlier on Saturdays. This is Saturday. Um, he gets home earlier on Saturdays. Hello. And uh, so he'll eat like what we had at five. He'll eat it when he gets home between seven and eight. Um, but I don't know how it's going to be because he has been working just crazy hours. Anyway, it's kind of good because like right now we've had like so many vehicle issues and such that it's just been such a blessing for um, him to have the overtime. So I forgot what I was going to do for supper. I am actually still making some. I have a couple like morning breakfast quiche type things that I want to do and I still need to make those. But... I don't really want to, my husband's not one for like um, supper, what is it called? Like breakfast for supper time or whatever. He wants breakfast at breakfast, not at supper time. So 
Um, I think that I'm going to keep one of those um, pepper dishes out. So my daughter, she just decided we're going to put like cut the sweet potatoes in half and lay them down flat, throw them in the oven. We already have the oven going for some other things. I have another daughter who is writing a list of what we're going to do for snacks for the week. Um, so she is doing that. So I think we'll have the oven on anyhow. And we're going to throw one of those pepper and onion dishes in there while we finish this up. And it's actually like three. I think I started around nine, but I have moved pretty slowly today. <laughs> but I've had a lot of help too. I feel really blessed by the kids helping me out. All right. Okay, so now my daughter is just going to take some of this cheese and throw it on the top. After this I'm going to show you what I have for tidbits left over from the day and then how I'm going to incorporate them into some other dishes. So when these are done we will have a Big Mac sauce that will go with these. So we will drizzle the Big Mac sauce over the top of these and they will be so delicious. Again, I almost forgot the best part. So we're throwing some bacon on top of these and then we're going to, this would have Big Mac sauce on top of the bacon, yum. So these are just like a Big Mac salad but I made it into like a casserole type thing instead of a salad so it would be the same flavor taste. Um, but I think that I might end up either putting this on lettuce or on potatoes or who knows what I come up with, but it looks so yummy. So what I am doing now is taking a bunch of tidbits that we had left over from lunch and from this cooking thing and making some. So we had this left over from lunch. So I'm going to do cauliflower, onions, peppers, carrots, the carrots over here that I had left over from the dishes. This is some kale left over from lunch. And then I have some leftover hamburger as well. Let's get this stuff in a little form. Okay, so those are the veggies there. My daughter actually didn't use all of that salsa. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw that in there as well. Cause we already had an open salsa in the fridge. Literally it's been on for like two minutes and I'm gonna bring this over to the table. Okay, so for lunch today we had Big Mac salad. So this is the hamburger, it's just plain hamburger. Um, we have leftover pepperoni from those chicken pizza casseroles. We had leftover, just a little bit of leftover bacon from some of those. I'll show you also, my daughter made a broccoli salad and I'll include this in the video um, after. And then these are the veggies that we just cooked up together. Then I took two dozen eggs or my daughter did two dozen eggs. She cracked them in here. And on top there are just some chives and I put salt and pepper in there. And then we're gonna grab this bag of frozen broccoli from the freezer. So two of these, I'm just gonna take half a bag of broccoli in each one of these six. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna actually get three out of this. I forget how tiny these trays are. Okay, so we'll do three of those. And then I'm gonna take some meat in the other ones. I'll do some of these. And then I'm going to add some meat in here. Meat, this isn't meat, this is, <laughs> these are veggies. I'm going to add some veggies in here. I'll spread it out after. There we go. Now, I'm going to pour some of this egg mixture. I don't want it to be too high because it's going to be in the freezer like this and I don't want it to dump. 
So I might need some more eggs, but I just bought two cases of eggs. Yeah, I think I'm probably gonna use, this is 24 eggs here. And I think that I'm probably going to use another 24 um, for these three here. So on these three, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some bacon on top. And we would have two of these for breakfast. And I'd probably have like a muffin or something like that on the side as well. And I will save the pepperonis to go on top of those ones. So these are also gonna have cheese. Let me go get the other eggs and I'll be back. So with some of that leftover broccoli, my daughter is making a broccoli salad. So in here we have 24 cups of broccoli, one large onion, one and a half cups so of, we actually used dry um, cherries instead of dry cranberries because we are all out of cranberries, odd. Have to order some of those. Um, three fourths of a cup of sunflowers and one and a half cups of bacon mix. And then she's going to make a dressing to go over that. So then she added, so then she added the dressing, which is three cups of mayo, nine tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and six tablespoons of sugar and salt and pepper. And then we'll take this and we'll put that into two containers here. And that would be to go with two separate meals. Okay, so they're all working on topping these off. I ended up using 24 more eggs. So the total count of eggs was 48 eggs, but the cost of the dish is really cheap. So if you're thinking about it, this right here um, for the broccoli and cheese one would be the egg. So for these three, it would be 24 eggs and then it would be two pounds of the broccoli. And then I bought the cheese on clearance for 98 cents and then the leftover pepperoni. It would be fine without the pepperoni. I just wanted to use it up in a dish instead of just one person like picking at it. So the total cost for those would be super cheap. Same with the other ones because we're pretty much using leftovers. Um, and eggs for a protein are fairly cheap. So you could have this for a meal, for supper or something, but we're, we'll eat this for a breakfast. Well, there you have it. Over 35 meals, all prepped and in the freezer. So yay. Are you guys doing freezer meals throughout the summer? What are your favorite meals? I hope you enjoy these. Write them down in the comments below, the meals that you guys are working on. I hope you have a blessed and wonderful day.